Welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Anne Reardon, and today we are making a treasure chest cake from the game Fortnite. My older boys and I have been playing this game over the holidays. We always seem to pick a game to play each holidays, and this time it was Fortnite. So that's what we've been playing. The chest is actually made from gingerbread, and the base is made from cake. So to make our wooden gingerbread planks, you'll need butter, sugar, flour, glucose syrup. Now normally I'd use half glucose and half molasses but I want a slightly lighter coloured gingerbread so I'm going to use all glucose for this one. Bicarb of soda, milk, ginger, cinnamon and cloves. Now you can take out the ginger if you don't like ginger and change that and just have cinnamon and cloves or just cinnamon and a little bit of grated orange whatever flavor you'd prefer. All these recipe quantities are on the howtocookthat.net website for you and the template is there too and I'll put a link to that in the description below. Add the sugar in with the butter and mix that on low speed and then add in the glucose syrup. You can swap this for light corn syrup if you don't have glucose syrup where you live. Add in the cloves, cinnamon and the ginger. I think my bowl is a bit too full there. We're just powder everywhere. Now we need to add the flour and the milk. I am totally out of room. So what I'm gonna do is tip the rest of the flour onto the counter and then tip the mixture on top of that and mix it together, kneading the flour into the mixture until it forms a really soft dough like this. Place about a third of the dough onto some baking paper and before you start rolling it, shape it roughly into a rectangle shape so that it's easy to get it into the corners and then place the next piece of baking paper over the top and roll it out to about one centimetre thick. Take off the top sheet and add your template into place and cut around it using a pizza cutter for all of the straight cuts. Now if your template is sticking to the gingerbread a little bit like mine is, just sprinkle some flour onto the gingerbread dough first and then it won't stick. Now we want to leave some extra bits of dough around our shape and that's because it helps keep the gingerbread in the right size and it also stops the corners from getting overcooked in the oven. Mark where the planks are supposed to go and you can use a pizza cutter or a ruler to cut the planks. Cut them right through on the front and back pieces of the chest but when we get to doing the side you just want to indent them, don't cut them the whole way through. Some of the planks are a slightly different colour so I'm going to use a dry paintbrush and just brush on some cocoa powder to give them a slightly different colour. Add some more cocoa powder between each plank and then indent on the end of the wood, just using the ruler there just to bash it a bit so it looks like it's a bit older. Now use your knife to make lines on the surface of the dough. The lines should be slightly wavy with the occasional knot in the wood just to give us that wood grain look. Cut out your other pieces in the same way, just texturing them all with your knife and shading them with the cocoa powder and then bake them in the oven. Part the way through baking, redo any of the cuts that go the whole way through and then shape the bottom front edges up a bit by adding some foil under the baking paper so that those planks just curve a bit. I'll show you that from the side so that you can see what I'm doing. You've got your baking paper, you've got the foil just sitting underneath so it's making it come up slightly. One important thing with gingerbread is being able to tell when it's done because when it's hot it can still be quite soft and a little bit bendy. So if you're not sure if it's done you can let it cool and once it's cold if it's not firm if it's still really soft just put it back in the oven for another 10-15 minutes because we really need this to be firm because we need it to hold its shape otherwise it's just going to fall apart. The other way you can tell if it's done is to flip a piece over. If the back feels dry, it's done. If the back feels really wet and moist, then just leave it upside down and chuck it back in the oven to dry out. Once that's all baked, we've got some fondant pieces that need making ahead. Put some baking paper over the handle template and shape a thick snake of black around the handle. You can leave this rounded, but in the Fortnite game, they're a bit more chunky and cartoony because of the way the graphic artist has drawn them. Then just join those ends together with a little bit of water and use your knife just to square it off a bit. Cut around the lock. Now this needs to be quite thick and cut off the corners and then round them out using the edge of your knife. 
To make the hole, I'm using a piping tip. Now, if you don't have one of those, just try using a straw instead. It cuts really good circles. Then cut straight lines of the keyhole and remove that bit of fondant. Use a smaller round piping tip to make indents for where the nails are on each corner. Cut out the two unusual shapes. Now these go on the side of the lid. I think they're supposed to have something to do with the opening mechanism of the chest, but I'm not exactly sure. They look a bit plain, so let's add a few details to them. And then the only other thing we need to make ahead is these circles. You need six in this size and then another four smaller ones. And then we wanna dust all of those with silver luster dust and dust the lock and the handles and those weird side bits too so that it's all silver and then we'll just leave those to one side to dry out. I'm pretty happy with how this wood grain look has turned out on the gingerbread. The cocoa powder's colored it nicely, the wood grain looks good. Now we just need to put it all together. So to start with, lay out your bottom pieces and your two side ones and cut the board to be the same shape as your pieces. As you can see, mine are a little bit different to each other. So that's why my board looks a little bit weird, but just make it match how yours have turned out. Then take some melted chocolate and make sure if your chocolate has cocoa butter in its ingredients that you temper it first. Watch my video, Chocolate Secrets, on how to do that. If you don't want to temper, buy compound chocolate that has no cocoa butter in it. Then you can see this one is a bit broken. You can just repair that with a bit of chocolate and then pop that into place on the edge. Put this one here and use a cup to hold that. Now you can get these Make It A Great Week cups from the merch store, there's a link to that below. Quick merch shout out there. <laughs> if you use the handle of the cup, then the base won't get stuck in the chocolate rather than just using the straight side. Do the same on the other side. Now I'm a bit worried about these walls falling outwards, so I'm going to add more support on both sides. That seems a lot safer to me. Add some chocolate up the sides and add that plank into position. Stack your other planks using more cups to support them while the chocolate sets and do the same on the other side. And then you wanna cover the whole inside with chocolate to seal any little gaps that you might have in your chest. Use chocolate to glue that little strip of gingerbread across the base there. And now we wanna make the lid. To start with, just put it like that and balance those two up so you can see what I'm trying to say next. Put the center one there. And then when you put this one here, because of the angle they're on, see how the bottom corners are gonna stop the tops coming together? So we need to shave off the bottom corners. So just grab a finely serrated knife and run it along your gingerbread. Now this is really messy, so I usually do it over the sink, but I'm doing it here so I can show it to you. And you need to do that that on the other piece as well. And then when you put them together, see how now they come together and they sit neatly next to each other. Once you've adjusted all your planks, you can put the two end pieces on top of the base and then use chocolate to put each one of those planks into place. Now the planks should stick out beyond the ends and you'll notice that I didn't add chocolate underneath the half circle bit here because I want to be able to take the lid off. Once all those pieces are set in place, take the lid off the chest, turn it upside down, and then line the lid with chocolate. Now this is gonna give it more strength, but it's also gonna make sure that our gas will only get out of the gap under the lid and not everywhere where there's little gaps between our planks. Cover our cake board in foil and using a little bit of buttercream to hold it in place, add cake randomly over the top. There's no real pattern to this, just make sure you have a flat area under the chest and the rest is however you want it. Cut some cake pop sticks to the height of your cake and poke them in, one for each corner and add a couple in the middle just for extra support. Then add the chest on top and the cake pop sticks to stop the chest from squashing the cake underneath. Cover that whole thing in gray buttercream and then anywhere where you can see lines so it looks like it's buttercream and not a rock, just gently tap it down to make it look a bit more like flat ground. There are so many different ground textures in Fortnite, particularly in the new release. So I'm going for the ones where there is a chest sort of in a clearing on the top of a mountain where it's got that different colored gray and then it's got a bit of grass. So just try and smooth that out. 
take your leftover buttercream and spread it on some baking paper and chuck that in the freezer for about 20 minutes. You can color some with a darker shade of gray and do the same thing with that if you want to. I just realized I forgot something really important. The light has to go in. I should have done this before I added the buttercream, but that's okay. I'm using a really bright torch for this and just wrapping it in orange lighting gel. And then I'm gonna put the whole thing in a clear plastic bag to keep it dry. This one turns on just by pressing a button on the top, which is perfect for how we want it. And then what I'm gonna do is just scoop out some cake from right in front of the chest and add the light into that hole. Then pipe some buttercream around it just to hide the torch. Take your frozen buttercream and cut it into chunks so it looks like little rocks and just scatter them around the place wherever they are. I'm gonna do them in two different colors. Roll out some green fondant and use your knife to cut three or four long thin curves. Then just pinch and twist them together for a tuft of grass. You wanna make lots of those, all different shapes, and then just leave those to dry out for a minute. Cut two strips of black to the width shown on the template and brush them both with silver. Wet the back of the strip and push it onto the chest at the top of one side. Just cut that to length and then use a knife or a blade underneath to straighten it up so that it looks like it's metal. Put a little water on your finger and rub off a bit of the silver so the chest looks a bit old and rustic instead of brand new. Wrap a snake of black around the top of your handle and brush that with silver too. Then put a little bit of water on the back and add that to the strip we just put on. Now while that's drying, it's a bit heavy so you'll need to support the weight. I'm just gonna use an off cut of gingerbread just to hold that up and once it's dry, we can take that out. Cut two strips of fondant, brush them with silver and add them around the chest from the bottom at the front all the way around the back. You just wanna trim them to size and then cut through where the lid joins the chest so that we can still take that off. Use a little bit of water to add one of the circles that we made earlier and add an indent there and then use a piping tip to add circles for nails in the center of each wooden plank and then add another circle there. On the left hand side, there's a piece of metal missing. I'm not sure how you'd actually damage the metal on a chest like this without destroying the wood underneath, but that's how the artist drew it, so that's how we'll make the cake. Use a bit of wet paper towel then to distress down the middle of the metal strip, taking it back a bit to black. Cut out the two chunky lock pieces and brush them with silver and then add the bottom one into place, making sure it's wide enough to fit around the middle part of the lock. Now take your serrated knife again and mark where the lock goes on the lid and shave away that part so that the lock will sit flat when you add it into place. And you just want to attach that at the bottom half, not the top again, so that we can get the lid off. Your grass should be dry enough by now so you can poke those into place all around the cake. Now I'm gonna put a jar of slurp juice inside my chest with some dry ice in it so that we can get that vapor coming out of the chest. You can put whatever you want in your chest, lollies would be good, but you're not gonna be able to fit an AR, a med kit or an RPG. When they spring out of the chest, they are much bigger than what the inside of the chest would fit. How cool does that look? It looks just like a Fortnite chest. For those of you who have no idea what Fortnite Battle Royale is, I'll show you one of my games sped up. Now, I must warn you, I don't usually like first person shooter games, so I don't usually play them. So I am absolutely hopeless with a gun. So unless I can take time to carefully line it up, I am going to get shot before the other person does. So that means I have to play a much more strategic game. So I land right near the edge of the map where there's less people and then I make my way into the circle with the storm behind me so no one can get me in the back. It starts with 100 players and the last player standing wins. A bit like a Hunger Games kind of vibe. Now you can play gung-ho and try and eliminate as many people as you can or if you can't shoot and you're a bit more of a pacifist like me you can just stay hidden and let everyone else battle it out. It tells you how many people are left here and the circle that you have to be inside gets smaller and smaller so it brings everyone together. 
if I was an aggressive player, I would get this guy over here, but I'm 100% sure that if I shoot at him, he'll turn around and shoot at me and decrease my shield and my health. So I'll just wait here and let him go first. If my boys are watching me play, they get so frustrated when I do this. They just go, mum, shoot him. <laughs> Once he's gone, I can go up his ramp and get into the circle and then I'll put on the bush that I have. Now I'm recording this game before the new map update, so the bush is still Christmassy. Spewing the new circle is not on my side. Now walking bushes are a teeny bit obvious, especially with flashing lights on them. So I'm going to need to move slowly around objects. I'll just speed this up for you. Okay, I'm in the circle and there are now eight people left. Make that seven, now five. Someone is building up there and there's a drop. So while they're distracted by that, I'm going to move into the next circle. I have no idea where the other three people are and this circle is getting pretty small now. Oh, there's someone. They're running to get in. And another person is obviously to my right shooting RPGs at him. The guy behind me has just jumped out of his base to get the loot. So there are three people left with me. One there. I can just see one person hiding in there. And where's the RPG guy? There he is. He has just used a jump pad to get into the circle. So while they're all distracted battling each other, I'm going to move into the next circle. <gasps> That's it. He got those other two people really quickly and there's only two of us left. And now I know where he is and he has no idea where I am. So I can carefully line up this shot. Yes, there you have it, Victory Royale. I'm quite sure if he had have had more health, then he would have won because if he'd had a chance to shoot back at me, he probably would have got me. But anyway, I still won fair and square. Strategy won the day. Click here to watch more Game Cakes, here for chocolate, here to subscribe, and here for my latest video. Make it a great week, and I'll see you on Friday.